Hello, and welcome to the third episode of the Haddoncott Tramway Project, a small route that I'm making in celebration of my now past 200th Trains livestream. When the route is finished, it will be uploaded to the DLS, and in this episode we're working on the Iron Branch. So, yes. Uh, the Iron Branch is again going into the hills, similar to the Limestone Quarry Branch, but the limestone quarry branch is quite out in the open, so this line is going to be forested. Uh, plus it will have a, uh, a little town at the end, which the name of it I've already come up with, but you'll be able to read that later. Yes, foreshadowing I know. Now, you might think that there really isn't that much space back here, and if you do think that, then you would be right. It was actually quite tricky to get all this stuff to fit in back here, but we'll see how it turns out. Uh, also, I do quickly want to mention, sorry about the delay in this episode coming out. All the recording, everything was done. I just could not do the voice recording for it for a variety of reasons that I won't go into. But here we are. We're doing it now, so that's good. Uh, yes. Now, originally, I did want the hills on the right to be a bit taller. But then I remembered that I put the stone circle on the hill on the left, and the uh, either Bronze Age or Neolithic people or, wh or whatever, whoever built the stone circle, clearly wanted to build it at a very high point. And so I think they probably would have built it on the taller hill next door if it was much taller than the previous one. So I decided to decrease the height of this other hill a bit more, and I think it actually turned a bit out a bit better anyway. So, yeah, as you can see, there's going to be a little river going down the hillside there, which I've actually already started making. And I know that for a river of this width, you really need a lot more space for it to accumulate water. But I'm just going to pull a little model railway trick and hide it behind a hill or a bend and then not worry about it. Uh, you might have already seen the road bridge at this spot, and that took really quite a while to make, because all the different walls and fences and all that is all, they're all individual splines, which I've had to put together in just the right way to make it look good, and I think it really does look good. Now, in the first episode, I said that on this route I wanted to have the assets I use for forests be different depending on which area of the map uh, we're in. And that is a thing that I have not forgotten to do, and so I'm making a new uh, little tree area that I'm going to copy and paste. And I can already tell you, I think it worked quite well. Now here I was having a little bit of issue placing the trees over where the bridge and waterfall assets were already placed, because I obviously didn't want those to be replaced by the trees. But I ended up solving it, luckily. Would have been a shame if that was the end of the route because I couldn't solve that problem. Now, originally with this viaduct that I'm cleaning the trees off now, I wanted to have the trees set on the sides a bit so that if, as you were driving over the viaduct, you would be going past the canopies of the trees, so that you would feel higher up. And while that was true, it did block the view from across the map. And that viaduct is a very prominent feature, so I decided to move those trees away uh, after all. Now you can see I've already built a little bit of the layout for the iron mine, and you might notice that there really aren't many, if any, storage sidings here. And that is totally not because there isn't enough space for them, no, no. It's because I wanted it this way. Uh, but no, I actually did want it this way, because I've already got sidings down by the steel mill where trucks are being stored, and I want those to get the use. So that's why I've decided to not put any sidings in here. Because originally I did plan on having a few sidings there on the right between the tracks and the road, uh, but I decided to not put those in. Uh, for that reason. 
Now, this little wall over by the limestone quarry that I put in to kind of catch some of the dust, I didn't like. So I decided to get rid of it, but instead of deleting it, I put it into the ground, mostly as to leave a little reminder of what came before. Now I'm just putting in a little uh, coal unloading area, because they're probably going to need to burn coal at this place, so there you have it. Yes, we don't need that pin anymore. Now we know what we're doing. Yeah, I really love these buffers. They're fairly new assets, but they really look very good. The only complaint I have about them is that the colliders, like with many track stops, is extends a lot more forward so that the trains actually collide with it before the actual buffers would hit the, uh, the boards, basically. Um, and as you can see, I've of course placed the main uh, mine asset. And it does look a little small, maybe, but I think it fits quite well as you're driving up. I'm just putting in some Queen Anne's lace, which actually is a really nice flower to work with, I found, because the, the thing with flowers is, they look really nice, but you don't want them to distract from the actual focus of the scene. Now, the Queen Anne's lace is a white flower, so it doesn't d distract too much. Plus, it's really common in the UK, so it's basically the perfect flower for a route like this. Uh, someone actually recommended that I put in a little fairy circle in here, so that's what I'm doing. Originally, I wanted to just do it from this view, but then the perspective messed up the circle, so I decided, okay, I'll go all the way back there and do it right. Now, this little path here, I originally wasn't planning to put in, but since I now can better visualize where the town is going to be at the end of the iron, uh, the iron mine branch, which is basically just over that hill, I decided to put in a path, because people would want to walk there, plus it's a nice path. Uh, just putting in the layout for the station at this town. Yes, yes, I've not forgotten about the you being able to read the town's name in a bit. Uh, we're, we're getting to it, we're getting to it. Uh, and these AJS station assets are actually really nice, I can recommend them, because the connection area where you connect the tracks is really quite small, which means you can do things like have junctions in the middle of the, the, the platform track, which you otherwise wouldn't be able to. And you can see that I've already got some assets over there on the right that I want to use in making the station, like for example these platforms or canopies and things like that. Uh, some of which I will end up using, others not so much. Uh, but we'll see. Now this Bodmin General Station I think that's what it's called, looks great, and I'm so happy that it exists for trains, so thank you. Uh, the only thing with it is that the doors are all on the same level, which means that if you want to be able to walk onto the platform from the station, you will also have to walk into the station building from that height, which is why I've put all the platforms around it. Uh, but I think it looks quite good, so I'm happy with it. I'm just putting in some roads so that I can be better visualize what the town will look like when I finish putting in the station. Okay, now originally I was planning on using a canopy spline here, but that just obscured too much of the view of the train. As you were coming in from uh, third person mode, you just really couldn't see it, so I put in some shelters instead. Oh, yes, and here, with the flowers, putting them in, in the planter. This is a trick that I only found out how to do recently, which is... So this is... the, the planter is raised up, so to put all these flowers in, I would normally have to place each, each flower, then raise it up, place the next, raise it up, but if I just use the copy-paste tool in add mode, I can place one flower, raise it up, copy that, and then paste it over itself a lot. So I'm essentially stacking the flowers at the correct height, and then I can just move them from there to where they need to be, and that saves so much time. So I'm really happy that I discovered 
how uh, how that trick works basically and that it even exists i guess yeah that's also important right so just doing a little bit more work on the town uh, i will mix up the uh, terrace splines in a little bit i think already in the next scene yeah there you go uh, because they did look a bit too samey and with these uh, terrace walls, I'm really not too uh, worried about lining them up properly because you're not really supposed to look at them too closely. It's just you look there and you see, okay, there are walls there. It looks right. So yeah. now this is the, the bit. So this little space between the road and the station just felt too empty. So I decided to do something that a lot of kind of touristy seaside towns in the UK have which is they've got usually the town's name written out in flowers. So that's what I've decided to put in here. Uh, yes, this is the bit where you'll be able to read the town's name. There we go. Minstrel Abbey. And in, if you uh, looked closely, you might have already seen the Abbey on the hill. Uh, and in case you're interested in what a minstrel is, I would suggest you look it up. <laughs> no, okay, I'll tell you. It's a medieval entertainer, someone who played music uh, and or performed. So there you go. <laughs> Now, it took me a really long time to decide on which flowers I wanted to fill in the rest with, because all the other flowers were either too tall or too they, they blocked too much of the, the actual text until I eventually settled on the lavender. But uh, I think it looks quite good, so I am happy with that as well. And now we're back to filling in some of the scenery between where the actual tracks go and the other bits of scenery that I had already previously made. Uh, I'm just going to skip over most of this because it's really not that interesting to watch, but it does need to be done. So yeah, I did have a few, uh, I did have the dirt road going over the little brook as well, which I, now that I've played Madrona recently, does kind of remind me of Madrona every time I see it. <laughs> But it is a thing that I've noticed um, on trails and things like that in the UK quite a bit, that if there are streams like that, oftentimes they'll just go right over a road or a path or whatever, which um, I think is quite nice to come across, if you can actually come across it without getting wet. Now I've decided to place a few more bushes along this dry stone wall, because it just felt a bit bare. And uh, I think it looks quite nice. Uh, don't mind me just placing some Easter eggs there. That's, no worries, no, no, everything's fine. Don't, don't worry, don't worry about it. Okay. And we're actually getting close to the end of the time lapse portion. So with that, if you would like to support these videos, live streams, roots, games, whatever, there are some donation sites linked in the description. Any donations or tips would be much appreciated. Uh, with that, thank you very much for watching and enjoy the cinematics.